So, shall we get started, folks? Thought maybe we could go around and we could introduce ourselves. Start with the. Uh, Toby Talbot, I'm the Highway Operations Manager. John Brayman, I'm on the Select Board. Denise Wheeler, Select Board. Cliff Emmons, Select Board. Jerome Nikani, Orca Media. Katie Lane Carnes, Recording Secretary. Peggy Bowen. Matt Gardner Morse. Stu Johnson of the Local Works. Rick Keane. Stephen Sparrow. Chris Holcomb. Heidi yeah. Thompson. <coughs> Carolyn Morton. Thanks for coming, everybody. Pretty good turnout for a Monday night when it's not a real select. My well, husband's coming, but he's smoking his pipe on the way. Oh, okay. He'll be here. So no Rose and Sharon today? No, Sharon had a prayer commitment and Rose was under the weather. Uh-huh. So we'll get started. It's being recorded, and they said they would watch the recording, or, you know, we have a really good minutes take or two, so. Um, so I'm going to ask, just because this is what we have to do every meeting, is there any public comment for items not on the agenda? All right. Addition or changes to the agenda? All right. So let's get started. We did do... Um, a brief meeting on February was it the 11th, I think it was, or maybe it was March 11th. I brought the minutes. Um, February 11th, and we took some input from neighbors, and it was a really well respectful, well done meeting. So I thank everybody who was there for that, and I'd like to try to keep it that way. Um, there were some ideas that emerged from that meeting, which we're keeping a list of. So I thought maybe we'd go around the room and just get <clears throat> some feedback or get your thoughts, try to keep it, you know, somewhat brief. You want to start, Carolyn? Sure. Um, I don't know how many of you were at town meeting, but um, maybe most of you know that I proposed a motion that failed to um, raise what's that? Pen. Oh, your pen. Okay. Oh, <laughs> to raise the general, the budget 50, approximately $50,000 with, with the idea that that money would be earmarked for the um, road budget, road maintenance budget. And Although the, mo the motion failed, it did, I think, generate a fair amount of pretty good dialogue, I thought. Yeah, it was good. You know, there were different viewpoints, obviously, but everybody spoke respectfully, and nobody, like, went off the rails, and, and I thought, and, and it went on for a good long while, maybe an hour. So, so I feel that, you know, despite the failing of the motion, that it, it was a good start to kind of kick-starting a, a, a discussion. Mm -hmm. And in my view, the discussion, well, the, the, the thing I wanted to see happen was, was sort of for people to have a chance to yeah. talk about the roads and find out, you know, ask questions and get the questions answered from the horse's mouth, sort of. Mm -hmm. so, so the road commissioner is not here tonight? No, but Toby's here. Toby's here. Okay. Um, so, my, in my view, you know, this would be a, an opportunity for people to sort of say what their concerns are and to sort of talk about possible solutions to problems that, I mean, I think the first step is to sort of identify what, what are, are the problems, if any. You know, there are problems in my mind, but are they in anybody else's, you know? Right. So. And that's what we're, we're keeping track of, kind of what people see as the problems and what people might offer to for helpful suggestions. Yeah that we can investigate. So maybe it'd be useful to sort of go around and see if people here think there are problems. You know, like... I think yeah, well, I think that's what we're starting Yeah, well, you could just... So I can tell you what my particular concerns are, and they, they kind of are divided into two parts. And one is the back roads, and one is the county road. Now, mm -hmm. as, a, as a long time, I've been in Maple Corner 33 years. My husband and I, Stuart, have lived on Apple Hill Road for 33 years, so 
I'm intimately acquainted with the county road in winter. Mm -hmm. I've had my numerous adventures on the county road over the decades. Um, and the back roads. So I, I feel like I can speak with a certain, um, uh, what would be the word? Authority. Not authority, just experience. experience. You know, just that I that I've been I've been looking at it for a long, long time, and so mm -hmm. there's certain things that I have yes, sort sir. of grappled with over the years. Mm -hmm. they're, they're not really new things, and I know that sometimes this conversation has been framed around climate change and the new conditions, and though I I do feel that that that's a part of it, like. For sure, and and I think it will continue to be a part of it. Some of my concerns predate climate change, mm -hmm. you know. And I'll give you an example. Um, and, and and other people might have a different experience, but my experience with the county road over the decades is, Callis had a, a certain way of managing the county road, and when you went and when you crossed the line into East Montpelier, it was clear that East Montpelier had a different strategy for dealing with their part of the road. And it, it's, I think it's common knowledge. And you know, I remember back in the old days talking to Eva about it, and mm -hmm. she would cut me off mid-sentence and say, Callis does not have a clear roads policy. And, and, I, and, and I got the message, and Eva was very good with that kind of. Well, I think most of the state has that policy. Yes, I've, I've read that subsequently on right. other road on other websites of other so so the idea was sort of like get over it this is callous this is the way it is deal with it don't complain the road commissioner is a saint and you're kind of obnoxious and if you don't like the way things are move back to where you came from now I, I'm exaggerating a little bit but that was sort of sort of like what kept me from ever saying anything for 33 years and it wasn't really until last year that it was a particularly like one little thing that happened that sort of tipped me over. The county road had been kind of a disaster, so I decided I, I couldn't deal with it, and I had to go to town. So I went all back roads, and it was icy, super icy. It wasn't like during a storm; it was after a storm. County roads, county road was icy or back. County roads, roads was was so bad that I had driven home. Was ice or slush? Or? Yeah, it was like that frozen, half-frozen, slushy, greasy horribleness that we all know all very well. And so this was what prompted me to sort of put my initial post on Front Porch Forum with last year, which I haven't really been back on there like this since. But And I took an alternative route to town, which was back roads like down through Adamant. And, you know, some people might not believe this, but I made a particular note of it. Like, there was virtually no sand on the back roads, and they were icy too. Now, I just went very slowly, but my plan, my sort of backup plan for avoiding the county road was somewhat e equivalent in its hazards. In other words, especially that hill coming into Adam, coming into Adam, coming out of Adam. And at that point, I was like, you know, like, what do I do? You know, like, I need to get to town, and it, is it really, is, the, is this the way it has to be? Like, I've had, I've had enough experiences of that, and so that's what sort of prompted me. And again, I, I tried to... Can I, can I just get some clarification? I just, I'm working with you mentally. Sure. So, um, you said the hill coming out of Adamant, you mean the hill as you're coming co op as you're going out of Adam? Yeah, like sort of as, as, you, as you're coming down past Lightning Ridge and you're, you're going along and then you come down into Adam. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. that whole section. That hill. Okay. Well, like all of it, actually. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's that thing of like you look at the road and you go, is there sand on it? I, I think I see a couple of dark spots. <laughs> but like, I mean, I have studded snows and I go slowly. You know, like I'm all about control and safety. and. Well, so backing up. So my concerns have to do with the back roads, but they also have to do with the county road. And I don't know, I sort of feel like maybe people that don't deal with the county road every day, if you don't live on this side of town and it's not a road you're familiar with, 
Heidi, back me up here. We live in Maple Corner. That's our lifeline to town. Yeah, I, I took that think. road for 33 years and work for the state every day. So. Yeah, so you know. You get up and you go, you know. It's and a main thoroughfare. It's yeah. a main thoroughfare. And from people from coming from Hardwick, you know, and yeah. Right and so, yeah. you know, that's always the concern is, is like, you know, you as you as your approach like I there's one night a week that I have an evening engagement I'm come home, coming home at 930 at night and it's always like I wonder how it's going to be and you know usually a drive through East Montpelier it's usually reasonable and then I it's like almost reflex now I slow down before I hit that callous line because I know things are going to probably change so you know I guess I guess my concern is is this the way what's happening there and and why is it so different? And is are there ways to make the county road safer? You know, maybe there aren't. I'm sort of asking the question: mm -hmm. are, Is there anything? Is this how it has to be? And um, you know, there are times when I think I know I'm going on too long, and I'll stop soon. There are times when I think. If you had just plowed it and thrown a little sand down, I can handle that. I actually love driving on a sanded, snowy road. <laughs> like that's, I consider that one of the best driving opportunities ever. But it seems like a lot of time, salt is applied, it isn't really cleared, and then you're dealing with something that's way worse than the original snow. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. yeah. And it's like, are we just creating, are we just making it worse? You know, and this is a question. Maybe I don't understand, but I know other people have had that question. Mm -hmm. um, so to interject, I live on a back road, and in the winter time, I would never take paved roads if, if I can avoid them, because the snow-covered roads are so much better. You have great traction, <laughs> you know, except for this weird nice. winter where it rains every well, other day. Yeah, and, and this is a weird one, but. Well, um, you know, we've all seen a lot of icy roads in our day. It isn't yeah. just this winter. Icy roads happen. Right. Get, this is a particularly bad this, one. I, am, I will grant you that. This mm -hmm. one has been a winter to remember. Yeah. But yes. Or to forget it. My concerns, and I just want to make a clear point, that my concerns did not start with this winter. Mm -hmm. they, they sort of... Accumulated? They've sort of reached a tipping point, I suppose. Mm -hmm. And, you know, um, <coughs> I... I <coughs> There's other issues. There's the speed issue on the county road. You know, many times, I'm sure you've all had this happen. You're on the county road, road conditions are bad, and you're going 30. Mm -hmm. Some idiot's behind you on your tail, making it worse. Right. And then it's like that calculation, is it safe to pull over? You know, am I going to hit Yeah, some? I don't know that there's a lot we can do about people. No, and I know. I know. I'm not saying that's a solvable problem, because I understand the complexities of enforcing but you know, just in casual conversations I've had conversations with neighbors but what if we put up one of those solar signs that said stream weather slow down I mean yeah they yeah. actually work yeah they do work they despite do. yourself you yeah know? we've been trying to get them in East Callis Village for a while now so I mean there's an idea yeah. is that worth exploring so these are the mm -hmm. kinds of things that I really would like to talk about this the back roads the, the sanding issue, and you, you know, you know the, the scarcity of sand that I've witnessed um, with respect to other towns around us. And I've, I've asked myself that question, like, are we really low on sand? We can't afford sand? What's the deal? You know, like, could we be sanding a little more? Some people say sand doesn't make any difference. You know. I think it all depends on the conditions, whether it makes a difference you know, as we have been learning more this year. Yeah, and and I'm sure I know this is a complicated issue, and I'm I'm interested in learning, too. Mm -hmm. you know, I don't know everything. I'm, I've learned Neither a lot I. just talking to Al. And, yep. But I my goal my goal isn't to place blame or to you know be a complaining person in Calus. My goal is to. Identify the problem. Let's Ident come with solutions. See if there's a problem, and if, if people think there is one, is there anything we can do about it? So that's sort of my. Okay. Very good. Thank you so much. Heidi? Okay. Uh, um, similar um, thoughts to Caroline. Lived here since um, about 93, and um, 
always notice that in East Montpelier the roads seem significantly better going to work or coming home. And for years it was just like, okay, this is just the way it is. And then Carolyn posted something a year ago and there's just been more conversation about it, you know, with people in the store and, mm -hmm. um, you know, there's just now, there's increased chatter about it. And so I'm just hearing more people say, well, I noticed the roads better in Worcester. I know, you know, when you get the Worcester line, I notice the roads better when you get to the Woodbury line or the Marshfield line. So, um, I, I'm just curious about why that's so, and if we do have more roads, like, what do we do about that? So, yes, climate change is a factor. Yes, we've had a lot of ice this year, more than other years. But I agree that it is always there. I would love the roads to be more like East Montpelier. I'm speaking on the county road. Um, but in general, just the bus routes. And I was here at the last meeting and I learned a lot in terms of, you know, Alfie talking about how they start plowing around four or five in the morning. Hit the, earlier depends. Yeah, and hit the county road and the bus routes and then do, you know, loop around and get sand and then don't hit the county road again till 10. That explains so much to me why when the buses are out in the morning and most people are going to work, the roads aren't great at a very, very crucial time, you know, eight and nine in the morning. So that seems like, okay, let's really target this. And I know um, Rose talked about, you know, had an idea about um, having people come out at different times, staggering the route. Mm -hmm. and, um, and it was also just fascinating to hear that they don't, they've moved away from using sand on the county road because of um, windshields getting injured. Right, I don't know that we ever used sand on Is the that county right? road. I'm aware of. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I didn't know that. And also, we learned that well, the bus maybe maybe 50 years ago. Okay. Okay. And we also learned at that same meeting, I think it came up about the bus companies not having tires that are good tires to have on the school buses for these roads. They don't yes. have. Remember, we talked about that. So that's something that we're going to follow up with good. with the school board. So just so you know, we yeah. are going to follow up on that piece of it. Right. So I just think that it's great that we're all brainstorming. I'm also not in a position of pointing blame at all. I think people work really hard. I just think it's um, time to figure out how to have better roads, um, mainly in the winter time. Um, and I heard some people say, well, people who complain about, complain about the roads want the roads just to be like they are in Connecticut. And I just don't think that's true. Yeah, I feel that's a real cheap shot. Like, yeah. I'm from Connecticut. I love <laughs> Connecticut. Yeah. I'm so happy to be okay, in Connecticut. <laughs> I'm also from Connecticut, and I <laughs> would never want to live in Connecticut. I love being in Vermont. Um, so I don't expect, you know, it's totally different weather over there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They're in the banana belt, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So um, thanks for having these meetings. Yep, and yeah. we're going to do two more just so folks know in other parts of town. Uh, is that it, Heidi? Yeah. Okay. Chris? My main concern, because I work second shift, I drive the roads at night coming home. I drive in the middle of the night. And multiple times I've encountered ice. And when I read the road plan and it tells me they're not even going out at night, regardless of what the roads are like. That concerns me. That, to me, that's irresponsible. And, and what, and, and can you tell me approximately what time you're talking about? Is it? Roughly midnight. Okay. That's when you return or head out? That's when I'm coming home. There have been multiple times when I barely make it home because it's so icy. Mm -hmm. And I've even considered parking at the school and walking home thinking that I'm going to go off the road. And I have a whole other drive. Okay. So 
that's that's basically my my main concern. Your main concern is that there's is, not is anything that, done between. I think our because yeah, because plan the plan between. predetermines that we're not going out well, they, at night. Well, I have to say, if there's some extreme event, weather event, they will go out. But you know, if they don't necessarily know, you know, like your schedule, for instance. So that is something we're making a note of. Mm -hmm. You know about looking at the hours of operation. Steve? Yeah, well, we've got a couple of concerns. One is lack of sand, period. Uh, need more sand. And you're former East Montpelier. I am. Uh, I know that for a fact that you people have the... Excuse me, you people? The select board. <laughs> Thank you. The, I don't like it when people say you. Okay, know. I'm sorry. <laughs> the select board has the authority to move money around to buy sand, so uh, I don't think that's an issue. Um, the other thing is, you expect bad roads when it's storming, and yeah, they come along, they plow the roads, and they put a little sand down, but. It should be followed up within a day or two because that sand gets beaten down into the ice. Mm -hmm. And there's been more than one occasion there's been glare ice. Um, I'm talking lightning ridge. You're talking lightning ridge? Uh, in two or three, three or maybe <coughs> four different spots. There was glare ice. You could, I bet you couldn't have stood up on it. And that went on for four or five days. So I think a follow-up, somebody should be going around mm -hmm. keeping track of it and uh, when it needs sand. And if, I mean, if the sand's not going to stay on the road, maybe you'll have to put a little salt with it. Yeah, I don't know what the idea is about putting salt on dirt roads. I'm not sure how that works. And then you've got also, well, when, you, when you do that, if it you put sand salt on the dirt roads and then you get the runoff into the ditches and then it goes into the stream so there's all that piece of it too that people don't necessarily always think about but we're made aware of that well, all I'm the time not from A and R. To do it every time, but I'm saying that when it gets <clears throat> icy like that. Do they do that in East Montpelier? I believe they do. You might have to put a little salt in with the sand. Okay. To just to make it rough. Call it a hot load. They what? Call it a hot load. Hot load? Yeah. Yep. Well, sometimes they add salt to sand to keep it from freezing together. Yeah. That's it's called, and that's called a hot load? Crude, yeah. Vernacular, whatever you want to call it. But okay. At the last I'm meeting, I think the, the, the issue was brought up about the sand. That it wasn't so much purchasing it, it was storing it. Right. And we talked There's about only maybe so much area another, that we have to put the sand. Well, we also talked about at the last meeting about one of the ideas came up about having another sand pile available in another part of town or maybe asking Worcester so that the guys don't have to when they're out plowing and they have to drive all the way back to the town garage that takes a lot of time because it's so the distance is so great but we're getting off track I wanted to give everybody an opportunity to speak Steve are oh, you done yeah. okay Stuart I think it's all been said okay I'm going to skip over Stuart right now um Matt so I, I live on County Road, and, and you know, I think it's generally true that it's better in East Montpelier, but it also depends on when you hit it. I've been on college roads when it was better, and hit the East Montpelier line. It's been a while since they plowed. Yeah, I so have it just depends on when you hit right. it and that kind of thing. And also, I, I don't like to see a lot of salt, because like you just mentioned, the runoff. Um, we own also up on Long Meadow Road, and our brook, in the springtime, it runs off, and there's just sand, you know, pouring down into the brook and filling the brook up. We have to dig out our culverts all the time. Yeah. You know, it's just a lot of dirt. You know, adding more dirt is going to have consequences. But I think it's been the extreme cold weather that we've had. You know, we've had weeks where it's been below zero and stuff, and, you know, nothing's going to work on that. Salt doesn't work on that. Yeah, I think salt doesn't work if it's below 20 below. Maybe it's like 22. 22. Mm -hmm. 22. Yeah. So, I mean, we've had, you know, times when it's been below that. And, and of course, the roads are colder probably than than the air. So, yeah. and I know at um, town meeting you mentioned people speeding. 
I, I'm always amazed these pickup trucks, which I don't have much weight in the back, and they go flying by me, and it's just like I can't look. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I, you know, I don't know. I, people go fast in these small too. So. Some of it, though, is also the amount of traffic. You know, the roads are better where they get a lot of cars going over it. It tends to blow the snow off and stuff. Mm -hmm. East Montpelier has more people. There's more people commuting on those roads. Those you know, cows tell, comes to East Montpelier. You know, you, go, you, you turn off it, you know, when you go by Templeton, the road gets a little worse. You go by Haggart Road, the road gets a little worse. You know, and as you go along, you know, as people turn off, there's mm -hmm. less traffic. So some of it's not even the plowing. It's just the amount of traffic and the amount of cars going over it. I never thought of that. Mm -hmm. so, you know, it's a, it's a complicated issue. And I, I don't want to... You know, belittle people's concerns. I mean, you know, we want to be safe, but you know, at the same time, you know, what we do has consequences. You know, adding a lot of salt and sand to our roads is not always that, you know, beneficial. Is that it, Matt? Yep, that's it. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I sent a couple of emails um, because the school bus goes on our road, mm -hmm. has to come down the deep hill. And then has to go in the little gully and back up the hill. Where do you live? By Strangians. I live at the bottom of. Uh, oh, that's good. Well, no, I'm on um, Bliss Road, but I'm at below the um, Unadilla Theater, Theater, right at the bottom. And the thing is, when I leave, Julie leaves at six. I leave at six thirty. Who's, who's Julie? My daughter. Okay. Just at the, she's at the end of the driveway, and we head up, try to head up the hill. We, there's been a couple of times when the, we've seen the sand truck go by and it's not putting sand out. Probably the dirt is stuck inside or something's not working right or the, the guy, and I don't know those three new guys and the little one I think that's on our road is newer than anybody else and I don't think he knows how to turn the sand wrong correctly. Now, I've lived on Bliss Road for 54 years I learned how to put chains on at the bottom of East Hill in the village to get home every night. Then I went to four-wheel drives with studs, and I used those for years. Then I went, <laughs> we've done, gone to a, have a plow with a sander in the back of the truck, and this last storm that we had when it was drifting and blowing, and that road was totally plugged going up the hill, we had not only did we have the plow and the sanding truck trying to come down to us, but Jean had to go out with the backhoe and dig out the damn road. Literally dig it out. Now there's people up now that live in the halfway up the hill that goes up past Madeline's into the four corners. And um, they just don't know that, you know, when you live on a hill like that, you go to the bottom first and get a run on it. Mm -hmm. Nope, they pull out into the road and they get stuck. And so, I haven't had, you know, I've been a little bit pissed off because, of course, we're in the construction business. <laughs> I know how to look at a truck and say, you're not doing your job. The second thing, if we're on the road that is supposed to be where a bus is coming 15 minutes after I leave the dooryard, it should be ready to go for that bus. The yeah. bus has been stuck three times, three different years on the hill going up to Sarah. Hey, what time is that? What? Do you know what, about what time the, that is? The bus goes by at quarter of seven. I leave at 6.30. If I'm five minutes late, I meet the bus on Ward's Corner headed through the village. So I was trying to figure out the best way to go. And I have my little four-wheel drive car. The big truck's coming back out this next year. And I've been going towards Woodbury. Because once I get to the Callis line, the Woodbury line, Woodbury's already plowed and they're already sanded because I can hear them on their scanner that they're already out there at four o'clock in the morning plowing. Our guys are not seeing them. And then when our guy comes, he comes from Stranahan's direction or, or Woodbury's direction, down past our house, gets to the three corners, and he goes up Blatchley's Hill and does that first. Then he comes back down. So now the bus is coming down over the other hill. It's not plowed, it's not ready to roll. And this last time, it's a damn good thing that day that we had the drifting. It wasn't drifted all the way to the village. It was drifted on that top of the hill coming down over towards our house. And it was blocked right across the whole road. Hmm. And if that bus had come over the hill, it would have been like Donnie was stuck. And Donnie has a four-wheel drive and everything. 
And when it's icy, there's three, Donnie has finally come to the conclusion that when it's icy, he comes to our house to see how things are. And if his mother and I can't get up that hill, and he stands it. And who's Donnie? My grandson, Donnie oh, okay. Moutrino. Okay. So he sanded the town road three times, and they've plowed the road twice, and they've dug it out with this backhoe. So Gene came to the conclusion as long as we're going to live there until we die, he's going to keep the backhoe. Uh. It's not going anywhere because he's going to use it to dig us out. Mm -hmm. But you know, this is the type of thing. And I got the reason I get pissed as well as I do is because I know that the school bus is coming over the hill and it's got a lot of kids in it because it's come all the way up the back way on East Hill, come around Moose's Road and then come up, up to our place. For some reason, it doesn't go down the East Hill anymore. So, and I don't know that we have any kids beyond this, but I'm gonna find out. But I mean, and as far as the other roads, yes, they're sandy, they're salted sometimes, but there are a lot of times this year where they're icy on the edges. And mm -hmm. You're all, everybody's in the middle of the road and you're hoping you don't meet somebody <laughs> around the corner because if you do, you need to take the snow bay. Yeah. And that's it. Thanks, Peg. Rick? Hmm. I, I, it's interesting in this whole debate. I mean, I, you know, what I've been observing over the past 30 years or so, and I'm curious to see what Stu says. He was road foreman in Cornwall for a long time, really good. But, you know, I've seen kind of the extreme cold temperatures where you actually get good traction in snow, you know, getting less and less, and we're having more and more of this transition weather, which mm -hmm. makes it really hard for driving and it makes it really hard for the road crews as I'm sure Toby will because then you've got to be out there more frequently and uh, and, we're, and we're kind of relentlessly because the winter like this we've, we've been getting a lot of small storms so you know places like the county road in my experience I'd be really curious to see what Stu says because you remember we did we were exper experimenting that, with that in Addison where some of the catalyzed treated brine, liquid brines because you don't use when you use a solid like salt and sand you get a lot of bounce and you plow it off and those liquids you boom down you right we it. use magic salt on the county road now do you do do you lose a liquid form yeah because you, you do mm -hmm. so that no, it's not liquid no, you use, I thought I often no. Said it was but liquid. it's no the liquid is added to the salt it's a coating no, I'm talking about, yeah, I'm talking about actually no liquid. I understand you're yeah. talking about a liquid brine not a right salt. To do well, those you can pre-treat a few days in advance, and they hold, they hold longer than some of your, Correct. without. So that gives you more working time. But so that, the magic salt actually makes the salt a little stickier because it is kind of yeah. a gooey thing that you add to the mm -hmm. salt. So it does keep some of that scatter in, in control. Controls it, yeah, yeah a little yeah. bit. Well, that helps with the the volume you're putting down with the liquids is significantly less than with the solids. So it helps you with your water quality issues. What is the number they used to give it? Like a, it was something like a sixth of the amount of that you would, do you lose, or you lose something like 60% of your, yeah, you of your solids. They bounce and get plowed off versus the liquids. Uh -huh. And, uh, but it's, the question is here, I mean, one of the things we were seeing is that, you know, roads were staying wet and unstable a lot longer than they used to some years ago. I mean, it's again change in weather. So, I think, are we are we putting beginning to put too much on our road crews? I mean, this is a question, Toby. You know how many hours I heard those nine hundred hours of overtime already this winter. Yep. And then, yep. you know, how do we? You know, the, you can only drive guys so far. That having worked in that business a little myself, of what you know, they. It, it's where it's unsafe. So, are we staffing properly, or are we being creative? I mean, I liked what they were doing with the the part hiring the three part time people to assist to break shifts. And this is that bigger picture, like you were saying. You're you're really your idea was a good one, raising money. The question is, I think it was a little premature. Figure out what the problem is first, and then and then raise the money to to address it. But you know, I'd be really interested in hearing what you have to say, you know, about, you know, that plowing load, because I know, you know, when you get winters like this, they're relentless, it exhausts people. So, uh, you know, you can only drive your crew so hard. Right. So, Rick, to get back to your question, the road crew through 
the end of February. The regular road crew work has worked 904 hours, and we've had more since then. It's over overtime. And right, and the three um, part-time folks have worked 237 hours. So altogether, this year so far through the end of February, there's been an additional 11,415 hours worked. 1100. Those are, those are yeah. scary numbers. Yeah. yeah. Spread over four. Really, for the 900 over four people. Right. I mean, that's so. Um, yeah, it's 1,141. Well, that that just begs the question. We just have to re-examine. You know, are we do we have the right resources available, the manpower, and then the flip of that, are we flexible enough? All these issues with the school buses really concerns me. I'm on the school board, but I also know, you know, some roads you can treat them every half hour and they're going to be bad within five minutes of treating them and so maybe we have to train you know be creative with our movement patterns on these roads if they're during a fence where we've got continuing deteriorating conditions maybe we should you know that's something school boards can work on you know redesigning school routes so that they get pulled back during events i don't know that but there are probably going to be a lot of little solutions to this problem but I know that icing is, uh, is, is particularly bad in the transitional times. It isn't so much the extreme cold times. It's the, it's the transitional temperatures where you get freeze thaws. And it's, uh, yeah, I know I used to, I commuted to Middlebury for seven years from Catalyst with a two-wheel drive over the up gap. And I would, I would leave here at five in the morning. And then I very frequently would, would be driving back after town meetings from you know, with select boards and planning commissions, I had 21 towns I was working with, and I would be driving back at 10:30 at night, and the roads were everywhere basically untreated. You know, the, because you, the guys couldn't go 24/7. You know, they they had to have breaks. You know, but yeah, they got really bad. And it gets. I don't. I don't think we can ever. You know, dry roads policies aren't practical at all. You can't do them. I, I was with used to do roadway design with the state. And you can't do it in this state. Right. It's not a possibility. That that maybe it's real in North Carolina, but yeah, <laughs> in sure. a place For like sure. this, it it's hard even. You know, when you're in an event, the conditions change by the minute. Mm -hmm. So it's. Uh, so on the manpower thing, I mean, essentially yeah. the the there's four guys that drive trucks. We have four trucks. There's four routes. You know, northwest, southeast, southwest, yeah. northwest essentially sort of quadrants in town. They come in at 3 in the morning, uh, load up their sand and get their trucks going, and probably are on the road by 3.30 to 4 o'clock in the morning, depending on, on the condition of the snowstorm. Um, if they're plowing and sanding both ways, so sometimes on a light snow, they'll only plow one direction on a road, because mm -hmm. they don't need to move all the snow. But when they go out and have to plow both sides, and sand, it's five to six hours per per route. Per route. How many miles do we? Um, the Just town has 73 out. miles, I believe, all together. And I've got a chart here that I'll share with uh, 7307 miles. We have the most of any of the surrounding right, So towns. we can sort of pass that around so people can take a look at what. So that's what we deal with. Would you um, say it takes six hours? Five to six five hours. To six. So essentially, they work for six hours, they take a break, and immediately, probably an hour or two later, they're going back out because they've got to get the roads open again for the, the um, school buses if the snowstorm is continuing. So essentially, they're doing 12 hours of plowing plus an hour or two <coughs> in the shop to, put, to fix things together. So essentially, at the end, from 4, four o'clock in the morning till 4 or 5 in the afternoon or 6, depending on when they get their second pass around and paying what they do, they're done. There's there's nothing left in those guys. They can't go back out in a truck. Do you think they need a six hour break. I mean that's yeah. the, that's the rule of thumb is a six hour break from that kind of time on the road. So that, can, that's pretty much a standard, you know, over the road trucker standard is that you gotta have a six hour break. So the manpower is not available for my road crew in the middle of the night. The only way we could have anybody doing night work would be have a second overnight crew that we would pay for to be on call to come in when there's a storm during the winter. So you literally have to have four more people. Do, do any other towns have that? No. 
not that I'm aware of, most towns have a policy that says we don't plow after 9 o'clock and we don't start before 3. And, and I've distributed that to the select board. There's probably seven or eight policies like that around us in all these rural communities that have essentially have the same re recognition is that there's just not manpower enough to do that. And they have a town policy that says after 9 o'clock, the roads are not maintained. Yeah. Is it possible to ask a question? Yeah, I just want to make sure I give Jim, I, when Rick's done, I want to give Jim over a chance to. No, no, good. I miss everything. I, it's just my observation. Yeah. So let's come out, Jim. My name is Jim. I'm a local plumber. I probably travel about a thousand miles a month. I mean, a lot on all these roads. Um, I have a weighted truck. Um, I have no problem. I'm no offense. I'm sorry if you guys want to yell at me. I have no problem with the roads. I go really slow. That's what I do. I pop, pull a lot of people out. I, I, every day, I mean, a lot. You say I you think, travel a thousand miles a day? Well, no, no, a month. A month. A month. So, I mean, I, I travel a lot. Um, I have noticed this year that they, I really think they need to put more sand on. I know, I, I know Toby said, you know, they're running out. I really think that was a, somehow just at least put sand down. I mean, I, I think that is mm -hmm. the bummer I thought this year was the first year I've seen in 20 years. That's so like, the one thing I thought was I get kind of bummed everybody, but it's the only way people can do it is front porch form. That's no, the, main that's the main reason I was here. So I think what you should set up is everything seems hunky dory. If, if you are a, a homeowner and you have a problem, there needs to be something. Well, my idea was, I don't know if you can, I know you call the town garage. Mm -hmm. Is but there they're any, probably out on the roads. So. Yes. So is there any way to call, like when these people get in, like at least nine, and then they have a radio, they can tell, hey, on blah, blah, blah road, there's a tree down, or this or that. They, or do, they do do that. They do do that. Yeah. So, so in, I don't think people should be doing front porch foreigner. That doesn't make any sense to me. It's like you need to call the town garage or someone so at least they know. I mean, that's, right. that, that's the only reason I'm here. I think there needs to be a better communication or somehow you can... Well, people often say things on front porch forum that they wouldn't to somebody's. Yeah, but I mean, I think it's just like, hey, this road is really icy. Yeah. There's a, you know, this is, it's crazy, this road. This, I think we need a lot more input. I know I get calls at home on. Yeah, but I think there needs to be a, 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 weekends, a way to holidays. do it. Weekends, holidays. <laughs> but there, need, there needs to be like a phone bank type. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know how to do it. I'm not a. Yeah, well, and I've, I've called Alfred. I, I can usually always get a hold of him. I, I called him like on a Sunday evening because somebody called me. He went right out and took care of it. Oh yeah, exactly. If they so he doesn't I mean, have a problem any, doing that. I mean, is there any, because there's, everybody has these two-way radios, right, in every truck, right? Right. And now, wh who else has those? Um, there's a radio here at the town office. Town office, and? Yeah, I don't have one, and I don't think I want one. <laughs> so it's just the town office and the town garage. And then you have one, Toby, right? I have one as well, Jim. Okay. So, so you I can have... always usually get a hold of one of us, Yeah. and we can, Get a hold just, of should be like, you know, this is who you call. Yeah. And well, then they, I think we've said, you know, you should call Alfred, but that doesn't I happen. understand, you know, if it's during the day and they're yeah. out plowing, he's not going to get the message for three or four hours later. So I've had people call me, I'll call the town office, and they'll radio Alfred. Yeah. You know, I, I, I mean, know, it's, it's just, kind of a long way around, but it, it yeah. works. I mean, is there a way, you know, I, I, you know we've got to be pretty creative about this because we can't double our crew sizes or, you know, we won't be able to afford that. Is there a way we can leverage volunteers, even for running like a loader, you know, and come out, you know, people sound silly, I'm, but to sift sand and, you right, know. I can't even find qualified guys to hire to do the job 40 hours a week or 100 hours a week when they do it. I mean, the problem with finding skilled yeah. operators and drivers with a CDL and experience, it, they don't exist. It's I'm lucky. I'm lucky, three, I'm lucky that I have three. I'm lucky that I have three part-time people that I can call when someone's sick or, or whatever. Yeah, and we're sometimes very lucky this year. I'll have five trucks on the road because we do have a spare truck, and so on. You know, when it's needed or when I need a greater in three trucks, I have people that are available right now. That's a luxury that's very few and far between. The 200 there's 200 hours. This winter of that spare, spare person drivers. with, the, with right. the ability to go out on the road without supervision. And there's so a liability that, issue uh, with yeah, insurance. Would, uh, yeah, I'm sure yeah. Have to, they would have to have a training and they would have to be. Right. So there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of ideas we can throw around, but I wanted to give Stu after hearing everything. Um, this is Stu Johnson. He works for V Trans Vermont Local Roads. 
Um, and I think you were a road commissioner in Cornwall, you said, right? Yeah, I've been for 25 years. Well, I don't know enough background on a lot of this stuff to, you know, come up with any solutions. I would say that um, several things that you're talking about, five or six hour trips, and I, that is extreme, I would say. You mean like a room? Yeah, I, I would say that typically more close, closer to four for, as, an, as an average. So, In other towns, you mean? Or? Yeah. And of course, obviously, but it's a division of how many men do you have, how many miles do you have, right. how many right. trucks do you have, and how many. And what kind of roads you got? And what kind of roads, really or where are they? I mean, you've got village things or not. Mm -hmm. So, but, you know, it's definitely an average. But it sounds like for the lay of the land or something that there's, you don't have enough. More miles of road. More yeah. miles of, yeah. Right, then they have to go all the way back to the town garage to load up again. Your idea. Um, we did that for a few years down our way because it was a lot easier for Sean to come to our garage and get sand. And then on a sunny day or a nice day, they would return it or they'd bring it in this fall when we were putting sand up or whatever. Mm -hmm. But if we had that kind of idea, <coughs> so that towns wouldn't have to travel, you know, eight miles empty to get back mm -hmm. to where they ran out. So. <coughs> or kept them from running out. So it was a huge boom to Sharm when we start, start that arrangement. And it's kind of a casual arrangement, you know, they came and got, it wasn't, the truck wasn't empty, so it wasn't a full load, but they brought a full load back. Well, if nobody cares, you know, it's, don't, you know, mm -hmm. tip for pat, you got everybody nuts. But if you keep it casual, okay. um, as far as the school bus routes, um, Obviously, that is really a primary function of or what drives the road crews. And, you know, I don't, without knowing the bus routes and the times, and, you know, but if you've got guys that are out there five, six hours away from their turnaround, you know, where they were first, you know, so do you start on the school bus roads or do you start? You know, so the routes change. The routes change yearly when the bus routes right. change. So we get the bus routes the from the school. We understand what roads they're traveling, and we adjust whatever yeah. you know for that window of when the bus is going to be there. Now, if it's not dead on, as Peg has noticed, yeah. um, that's something we can change. We just need to have some some you know some well, information about and that. And it depends, you know, are the guys running chains or are they not? You know, is it a, a light cold? Like fluffy snow, you can, you don't need chains. But okay. Nobody goes out without chains. Nobody all winter chains. No. That's chained up all, that's all winter long. No problem with that. Right. You know, but the buses aren't chained. Right. right, and that's what we discovered was a problem. The buses weren't chained. <laughs> they didn't, have, yeah, or you know, front. or front. So that's nuts. And, and but then we, yeah, but then we, how, how but then that? the road crew and us take the heat for you. that. Okay. So we are, we are going to work. On that issue, just so you know. So, you know, not to go down the path of Act 46 cons force consolidation, but there has been pressure for. This is not a recent issue. There's been pressure on schools from the state to force schools to save money, and and by taxpayers too, and to farm out and consolidate transportation between towns within a multiple districts within a supervisory union. So a lot of uh, towns and supervisory unions gave up their their own school buses mm -hmm. and have contracted that out. That's what we did. So if you're a bus company that's trying, and I don't, haven't confirmed or conferred it with them about this, but it seems pretty obvious to me. If you can have one set of tires that gets you around the, the, the year, you can save a lot of money. Um, no winter tires go on the internet, by definition, are softer and stickier and wear out quicker. But you need soft and sticky for ice. Um, studded snows are great. 80% of your braking is your front wheels. 100% of your steering is your front wheels. If you have no traction in your front wheels, whether or not your foot's on the brake pedal, there's a problem. We had a little bus incident. And I'm, not, I'm calling it an incident because it was like less than a five mile an hour collision. Um, but the bus, he took his, the bus was coming down Lightning Ridge Road on a bend, 
and he couldn't even steer. It was zero traction, and Alfred had just gone through with the plow, with the sander. Um, the ice was so hard that the sand just rolled off, and I actually was there, so um, I Thanks. can confirm that. But I then looked at the bus tires, and like I said at town meeting, those are tires you would put like on a tractor trailer if you're going coast to coast and you want to run 80,000 miles on a set of tires. Wrong tires for the winter in Vermont and wrong tires for a bus in particular. So um, we need, the select board is planning to meet with the school board, our local school board, but I think we need to meet with the supervisory union school board as well and have a conversation about the next contract with the bus company. And if you don't set standards and set requirements in terms of what they need to equip their buses with, we're going to wind up with this situation next year. I expect that if we require snows and studded snows, um, they're going to up the charge to the supervisory union substantially. But that's the trade, right? Um, this is how you make money in your private company. I have one other question for this gentleman. <laughs> you mean Stu? All right. I don't know that, that he was. I don't know that he was done. No, no. I, I, I mean, I can look at my list and go ahead. Okay. Main time. roads, not county roads. Say, route right. fourteen, right. route twelve, yeah. any roads. of the main roads. State roads. Okay. East Callis Village, it's got holes big enough to break your tires mm -hmm. and your rims. Donnie has ended up with five cars in his dooryard at the end because they lost two sets of rims and tires on one side, and the holes are That's getting bigger 14. in the village. Is that yeah. something that the selectmen should be pushing you guys to do something about Don't push fixing? me because I'm not fixing my holes. <laughs> but I think it's pretty, I think it's pretty, but, but pretty widespread statewide this year. It well, is, it's but a it's huge problem in the village. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But I know that 14 is because, you know, my sidekick comes down from hard, uh, hard, hard work every day. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so, no, you should feel when you've got a problem like that, even a mm -hmm. private citizen call a district, call St. John's for District 7. Oh, I know who they are. Yeah. I'll write them a letter. Yeah, well, uh, that, yeah, that nothing that. wrong with that, too, but you. Well, I drive yeah. from here, from my house to Morrisville to Hyde Park every day. Yeah. And they've got holes they're starting to fill in mm -hmm. with something. Wow. But East Callas Village, I mean, all the way, there's about a mile and a half up above the village into mm -hmm. the, to the village. Now you're getting these deep holes and yeah. people don't realize they're there. Right. It's, it's, it's hole patching is a, yeah. it's, it's one of those things that it's, it's temporary. It's, temporary. The best. Right. it's a frustration for the guys to be out there throwing the stuff in the holes mm -hmm. that's not cheap and knowing full well the next time it rains it's all going to blow out. Two days it'll be gone. <laughs> You know, but there are options there for, mm -hmm. that I certainly recommend for the communities if they're dealing with pothole patching that they spend the extra money and, and yeah. buy a better product. But there's no way the state could do it. So, what are you hearing across the state from other towns? Are are we unique? Is are other towns faced with the same kind of issues with the time that people go out plowing? I mean, I know we have more back roads than. Yeah. Our surrounding areas. I mean, there, there's always going to be a bad situation. I mean, one of the points that I was going to make. I don't know if this is the case or whatever, but you know, it, all it takes is a windshield wiper blade to fall off a truck, and that truck's out of commission. You know, if you don't have the right arm or whatever the motor gives out in a, the wiper shot, then you're done. That truck's that's, that's can't use it. Mm -hmm. You know, we so, have a backup truck at FYI. Well, okay. more than once I've seen, you know, the whole towns lose all their trucks. And we hear it on the radio. You know, yeah, we have had times who's got a spare truck. when equipment was down. Yeah. And we've lent trucks to other towns. Yeah, Worc yeah. Worcester and East Montpelier. It works both This ways. winter. Right. You know, but, but, you know, so it doesn't, or it can slow somebody down. You know, um, it's a big advantage to run in chains 24 7 because the guy doesn't get thinks he's going to get away with it and finds a bad spot and then he's got to stop and put chains on out in the lily laps. You right. know, so. We have a couple of locations where even with chains it's touch and go to get yeah. up the hill. So right. some of it is the territory that we have to plow, the condition of the roads. And those are things I don't um, understand. Long Meadow Hill, I mean it's, uh, I, my guys have had to back down that hill constantly by not being able to get up the hill. Yeah. 
So it, that's just the conditions of the territory of the town of Catlins. Mm -hmm. The other thing that I will mention is, so I, when I first started working with the road crew, I rode with everybody on their route to see what they had to deal with, what was going on. And I went out in a blizzard with Sid Griggs. And we started here at the town office and did the northeast corner. By the time we came back, there was a foot of snow on the side of the road that we had plowed. So the problem is that there's always a timing issue. If you go to work five minutes after the plow goes by, the road looks great. If you go to work three hours after the plow goes by, you say, where are they? Where have they been? And that has nothing to do with the road crew or what we plan or how we do it. It has to do with the timing of storms. And there's really nothing we have to control that. And if I've gone around once and I come back and the other side of the road has a foot of snow, I'm going to the shop, I'm going to turn around and come back out immediately. But there's still that four to five hour period of time in the, in the transition of a storm that we have no control over. And there's a lot of times this past winter where that's been the case. Yeah, if you have wind, you got 20 minutes. <laughs> right, and again, when you have wind and then plug up a road, you know, you need the loader to get it done. So essentially, once we realize the road is plugged, well, the loader comes up and takes care of it. But again, it's all a timing issue. It's not immediately, as soon as that road is plugged, it's not like we're right there to clean it up. We have to determine, somebody has to say, hey, it's plugged. Or we have to drive around later and say, well, I know up on the top of Max Gray Road, it's going to be plugged. i got to go take a look. And it's a timing issue, so I can't coordinate all of my work with your time because when you need to go to work and it doesn't match my plow route or it doesn't match my manpower, it's going to be an issue that's just not solvable at that point. It just It's the reality of how we deal with it. Um, I don't control Mother Nature. If I told her, oh, don't start till three because I'm not ready for you yet. And don't start at nine because I don't have anybody to take care of the roads. We're at the we're at that whim, and so we all have to realize that there are conditions that we can't deal with that we just can't solve. Do you have any suggestions on? Is there any way to do some things differently on the county road? So again, so the county road is done by Alfie in a one-ton truck. He carries salt, and essentially his route starts in East Callis, and he does the Marshfield Road because that's a steep, windy road, and that's pavement that needs to be cleared off, so that's his first pass. Then he does some other roads, uh, again, school bus routes on his way over to this side of town. Um, he probably gets to the county road at 4.30 to 5 in the morning to do his first pass and put salt down. That gives it time to work. You know, it doesn't work immediately, so if you plow it off and you put salt down, the road's not open right away. So, you know, he's sort of trying to balance all of the roads that need salt and clearing. He also has a bunch of um, just regular back roads um, in his route. So again, it's a question of, okay, well, if you go to work at six, the road might be great. If you go to work at seven and the storm's still going, the road's gone to hell again. How many, how many miles of pavement? Uh, the county road is three, and then there's Marshfield Road, which is probably a mile and a half, and then there's another spur. Not a lot. Yeah, well, five, 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 five miles, yeah. maybe, you know, of pavement. Most of ours is back roads. It's 71.73. 73. It says class two is 18.45. Mm -hmm. Well, that's not paved. That's just class two. Yeah. yeah. So again, it's like, okay, so if 90% of people in, in Maple Corner want to go to work at 8 o'clock, we can change the route so that we take care of that, but we don't know when you go. And what is really the high point of what we do in our planning for timing is the bus routes. That's what they pay attention to. That's what changes the pattern, is the bus route. And, I, and we change, you know, Last winter we had two guys doing one route because occasionally we would get Ed Rowell, a, a retired member of our squad, to come in and we let him do half of a route. So somebody got really used to having the road clear at seven. And this year they called me and said, Jesus, how come you guys never come by early anymore? And it's because I'm back to one guy on that route and when he gets to the end, it's an hour and a half later. So, you know, it's about manpower and timing. And 
as much as we can, again, the priority is bus routes and, and, and you know, people going to work, traffic. Those right. are the routes that we try to highlight. The buses seem like they come through around 7, you know, U32 buses, 7, 7.30, something like that, quarter to 7, 7.30, and then the elementary school comes an hour later. So that period, you know, and then 8.30, 9, it seems like that is a crucial time to have the roads clear for the buses, and most people, it seems like majority of people have to be at work around 8 or 9. That's pretty standard. Right, so if it has snowed overnight and we leave at 3 or 4 in the morning, <laughs> and the snowstorm isn't continuing, those roads will be open, will clear. But if the snowstorm is still going on at 6, 7, 8, and 9 o'clock, there's going to be snow in the roads. Can I just, because, yep. can I just make one comment? Speaking for myself, my main concern <coughs> isn't how the roads are during an event. I understand when it's snowing, like during a snow event, the roads are going to be bad. Like, that's normal. I can't expect Al to be right in front of me whenever I want to go out during a storm. That's not my concern. My concern is often 24 hours later, 48 hours later, when you would think that by now they would have cleared the road or thrown down enough salt to, or magic salt to, to take care of the road. But this happens, I mean, I almost feel a little bit like, you know, like I need a videotape of what I'm describing because it, often my experience is after the storm is over, there's this long period, sometimes days, when you'd expect the county road will be better, and and it's still horrible, and you cross, and this is the other point, you know, the argument that, well, there's more traffic in, there's more traffic in East Montpelier, or not as much in Cal, I mean, or there's a change in the elevation, or there's a change in the weather, if that were the case, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, I would expect a sort of gradual change. Yeah, I don't think that that's an argument. I think those are just some observations and facts. Mm -hmm. You know, I have noticed over the decades, and I, and I truly am not a crazy person, you know, <laughs> and, and I think, truly, I think the road crew knows this too. You cross that line, and yes, maybe once or twice out of 100, the reverse is true, but I think I'm stretching it there. It's a thing, you know, you cross that, you can. You don't have to look for the green sign. You know where that line is. I feel like that's just common knowledge. That's, right. Everybody right. knows that. The right. road crew knows that. <laughs> Toby, I think Toby knows that. And and the, the line has always been, well, it's callous. Callous right. just. My, my first reaction to that when we were talking the first time around on it, that my guess is they may get there twice as often because they've got they have, Three a four, they have a four hour route. I looked it up. East Montpelier. East Montpelier does, okay. Yeah, ours are five to six. And, and they're, so they're getting there more often, and yeah. the snow doesn't get a chance to pack down, whatever they Well, I think they were also them. using product that we they weren't using. They were the using. icing, I think, on it that we did. Yeah, I we don't know what the was, No, we, 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 we got the tip about using magic salt from East Montpelier, so that's right, how. It was, it was after my, my posting last year that. I think so. And I thought, oh. And then I thought, do, do the road people talk to each other? Like, well, that's you know, do that? Does that happen? Oh sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So like, it surprised me that it wasn't until that point that all of a sudden it was like, oh well, East Montpelier uses magic salt. Maybe we'll try some of that. And I'm like, well, yeah, they, they had, must have known they were using magic yeah, salt. Yeah. Well, Carolyn, they had just barely started to use magic salt. Oh really? Ma magic so. salt hit the scene hard last year. And, and right. there was incentives to try okay, it. So, so there's something off in this equation, though, because because things didn't change when magic. I mean, this is a no. long-standing thing. Ma it's magic free only magic makes, salt. Ma magic salt only makes salt work less, like he says. Right. So, it, so something was different <coughs> before magic salt. My guess is salt. they're getting there more often. I don't know. I, well, I don't know. And, well, and well, do you thing, think we're understaffed? Is a question. Well, for, for well. I mean, do you think we need more staff? I mean, I know, uh, money aside, do you Money's think we're... Not a, money's not Well, no, I mean, 
the, the, the second Under question is, can we afford to staff properly? But well, it's staffing and equipment. It's a, yeah, another Do you truck. think we are underserved by staffing and equipment in Calus? Well, if the goal is to spend more time plowing the county road, if it needs more passes, then we are understaffed because I only have one guy who's doing the county road. And he does it probably twice and sometimes three times, depending on what the storm is and what the accumulation is. I mean, he pays attention to what is happening on that. So if, can I just throw out a thought? So if East Mount Pillar is able to get out to the county road more often, can we ask? I don't know that they do. Well, it, it probably is true because they have less roads. Well, can we I, ask, can we pay them to do Callus at the same time they're doing their part of the county road? Sure. Just money. It's just money. I know. That's if they have. Well, that's if they have. Yeah. You should right. really look a little bit at that liquid. Right. If there's liquid left, because they go so, down, you can pre free. So the thing is, is that we really so. need to talk to the road foreman in East Montpelier and find out. I know for a fact that he's using really heavy doses of salt. Yeah. He's, he has a very hot. He puts a lot of salt down. That's part of the reason the road has opened up. Which we've, on both ends, on the Montpelier yeah. end and the Callis end, everybody has noticed that he's using a lot of salt. So the environment is taking a hit. Even though the road is good, the environment's taking a hit. Yeah. So you, you just have to balance they, that. They result. really got to look at the liquids, because they do, I mean, if you haven't used them, and they're more expensive, you know, by weight to, to buy, but they right. use a lot less of it, and you can pre-treat. And they've got a longer working time, so you don't right. have to be back. But pre-treating means more forecasting and more going down. You've got three days. You three yeah. the, what, people do that three certainly. days. A lot of it's got to do with the amount they're putting down. They even know what they're putting down. If their machines aren't calibrated appropriate yeah. properly yeah. and all of that kind of stuff, he may think he's putting down three hundred pounds in my own, and I mean, might be thinking the same thing. And right. and yet one of them's putting down one hundred and fifty, the other's putting down six hundred. Uh, no, that's extreme, well, that's one thing that is probably a pretty <coughs> quick thing to check out is how much product is our is Calus putting on our end of the road, and do we need to increase the amount? That's a pretty quick. You could look at the volumes like. they consumed this winter, and right. we consumed, and you know, gauge it against. I, I looked at the so, a sand budget per mile for East Montpelier to Calus, and they were pretty equivalent. Mm -hmm. Right. I yeah. was thinking salt. Well, I'm thinking county. I'm thinking I'm talking county road because that seems to be what you well, were talking uh, about. Well, my concern, as I said in the beginning, isn't just the county. I know, but we were just talking about the yeah, county, county road. road. Okay. So that's why that would be salt for yeah. sure. Right. Well, pavement. Yeah. Pave you use salt for some towns are still I, using I, salt yeah. sand mix, which is one of the questions that I was. Is is he carrying straight salt when he does his pavement? So he's he's Stu, I, I got a question, and, and Toby, um, and being a lay person at all this. Um, can a paved road be maintained like a, a gravel road is in the winter? Can snow be left on it and just be sanded like a gravel road, or or is that problem does it melt through because of the pavement and the Which ice? I mean, I'd go back four years when I was in college up in New York, and they they did choose sand, and they'd get foot deep potholes in the snow. You know, and no. the breakup was horrendous. I don't know if you remember a few years but, ago there was a spot where they didn't do it and the, the ice built up and there was like a yeah. couple of inches of ice so it was really rough. Yeah. So you can't do that on a pavement? Yeah. Okay. The, so I don't know whether we want to get into a whole lot of science here, but the, the proven method, mathematically and scientifically and environmentally and all of that, is to put down a light dose of salt on your road every time you plow it, but you have to get back there and keep it. How so, often? So what the, well, depends on the temperature and everything else. Oh. And the whole deal is to keep the, the, the salt is not supposed to be melting the snow, per se, like you might do it because you don't want to shovel. The idea is not to have, allow it to stick to the surface on the road. Right, so, so it doesn't, you don't, you don't have it doesn't, a bond. It, it doesn't bond to the road. You don't get the ice pack. Right, and so we, have, we have seen that happen Right. So there have been years where that has happened on the county road, where right. you are stuck with ice on the county road mm -hmm. that last for a month. So the other thing to understand, and one of those one of those instances where the snow froze to the road. So when there is a rainstorm coming, and it snows and then turns to rain, 
the technique is to not plow the snow up and let the snow absorb the rain. Right. Yeah, and that's a safer condition than plowing the snow off and then having the glare ice on top of the road. Right. So what happened in last year was that the temperature dropped immediately right after that and we didn't get to the road in time. And actually we probably should have gotten the grader out to try and deal with that. But you know, again, the next couple of days it, it went away. So there were a couple of days when there was frozen ice on the county road that was a terrible thing and we probably should have gotten the grader out to deal with it. But the theory is that you don't push the snow off until the rainstorm is over. And then you come back and do it, but then it froze hard and that was not something that they could plow off. There's a, there's a lot of times when you go out there and it'll be warm, wet snow, and snow, and you plow it, and you, as soon as you plow it, and it turns to instant yeah. ice. Mm -hmm. So you've got to actually be salting right. all the time, whichever and, way and, you go. And the same holds true on the gravel roads, that if you yeah. if you plow it off, then all of a sudden you're going to have just a glare ice surface, yeah. Yeah. and even if you go back out and salt it, the rain's going to wash the salt, the sand off. Right. Sorry, and also, sand, don't, the, don't, the, don't the vehicles also, when you put sand or salt on, doesn't the the whoosh from the it vehicle traveling. Well, that's how fast they're going. Well, sometimes know, they're going like, well, yeah, I'm just well, thinking sand it's on the back roads. When the roads are cleared off and the weather's nice, and, you know, people get pretty nervy about what they'll do and how, right. how they drive. But, but does the, um, the, the, what do you some of the wind and, from the car going yeah, over the sand, does that blow off or blow whatever? Off? A lot of it, the other thing we argue is, you know, the, the quality of your sand is huge. Mm -hmm. It's huge, and what happens right now is things start breaking up. Mm -hmm. um, if, if you have a coarser sand without much fines, the fines blow away. That's you, you know sometimes it's dustier in the winter than it is in the summer. That's the fines in the sand blow away. Mm -hmm. So if you get a cleaner sand and more stone, it it's apt to last longer and give you a little more. Yeah, light. so we use washed sand and we put half inch stone in it. You do? Okay. Yeah. So our I mix is, our mix is the appropriate it's ideal yeah. mix. Yeah. Um, that's, that's people are just um, thinking that we need more of it. And one of those issues is how big is how much space do we have? the problem is I can't go buy sand right now. If my pile were gone right now and I yeah, needed the some closed. there's no place to get it. So essentially we fill up to what the average normal year pile of sand is and Hardly ever do we back off, but sometimes Alfie gets a little nervous about, well, that sand was put there by Don Singleton, and I'm getting down to the bottom, and I, you know, I've got to make decisions about how how aggressive I get with sand. Do we have room at the town garage to store more sand? I don't know. It's it's a pretty big pile to begin yeah, with. Yeah, I mean, it looks seventy-three it's miles it's of huge. road and a lot of sand on it. It's uh, takes a big pile. I have a question about the sand budget. I noticed in the town report that a few years ago it was sixty-five thousand dollars for sand, and then it went down by ten thousand to fifty-five, and it's been stayed at fifty-five. That's because that's budget. because that's what was spent. So we, 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 we shot too high. We had extra money left over, right. so we realized we were budgeting too high a number. It wasn't like we're buying less. Right. We're still buying the same amount, but we realized that the budget that we were showing wasn't a reflection of what was actually spent and what was, as John said, that's how much sand we have needed in the past. Now maybe we need to rethink, you know, do we need to buy more? And that's what I'm asking, do we have enough space at the town garage to, to store more or do we need to like ask Worcester, can we stockpile some there? That's so that having that second site would be a huge business. Right. You cut your you travel site. Time. Well, not only your travel second time, but you've got your sand you storage is just doubled, maybe, or right. close to it. Right. We can look into talking to Worcester yeah. about yeah. using their sand pile. I mean, again, it's just a, that's only one truck in this northern, northwest corner. Does Alpha <clears> do the West County Road, too? No, that's done by Paul. Paul, okay. Yeah. What about Rose's idea about staggering the roots? Um, Toby? What do you, I don't know what you mean by I don't staggering the really, roots. I, I wish she were here to well, describe it. Well, East Montpelier apparently has somebody that goes out. I don't think they do it all the time. Maybe Steve can explain it, because he was on the East Montpelier Select Board. 
But apparently they had somebody that went out during some of the off hours when it was a really bad storm. And I don't know how they did it for sure, or if they're even still doing it. Do you remember? That still? would be uh, something new, because I, I don't recall that. Uh, I know they've been doing it for quite some time. Roy Bowles used to do it in our town. Excuse me? Roy Bowles. He used to stay If here? you came in any time between 12 o'clock and 4 o'clock in the morning, Roy was on the road with the pickup, checking everything. Yeah. The pickup that Alfie uses, you know, the extra pickup that now you say Alfie is actually working the county road with just that little truck, not, not the, the one ton. Yeah, not, not the dump two. truck, the small no, dump truck. Five, that's what they've, they've done that since Don that's Singleton the, used to use that. We have a 550. Yeah, 550 dump truck. Right? Don used to use that on the county road. Yeah. 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 And the other thing, you know. East Montpelier are on the county road. Their town garage is 500 feet from the county road. Sure. So when they need to reload or whatever, they go down, come back. They can load up. They can, not, you know, mm -hmm. it's immediately there. And if oh, looks a little snowy, I guess I get to go out and do the other seven miles of the county road. I mean, that's the whole difference with how what, what we're dealing with and what you see on the East Montpelier side of the county. So it's proximity to the pile. So right. if we could well, work proximity with to the truck and the garage and the manpower, right, is right there. Yeah. If it needs it, they can run out. Now, if Alfie's all the way back in East Callis, he doesn't have eyes on the county road. No one's telling him that it's got three inches and it looks sloppy, and he's got to <coughs> take a chance either to come back over or not. So I mean, again, it's there, there's a, the operations of the two towns are entirely different for those roads. Well, it sounds, it sounds like I'm getting the impression from you, Toby, and you can correct me if I'm wrong. I'm getting the impression from you that with, with the money that we spend, we're, there's really not, not much we can do. Is that, we, we don't, we're maybe... We look, again, so the, so the issue is the timing issue. is about adjusting timing so that when we're doing whatever we're doing on the county road or some other road that people are important with, what we're doing right now is paying attention to the bus routes, and that's driving how our routes go. Now, if we have to add in another dimension of, well, <clears throat> I need another pass on the county road two or three times a day, then I've got to find manpower and or something else to make that work, mm -hmm. if that's what we're going to do. And does it, so does that and, mean and that hiring somebody make, and, else? Or? And that may make... Marshall side of town, the Marshall Road side of town, or the road to the school, that may take a suffer there if we're yeah. diverting that person to a second pass or a third pass on the county road. But then that you touched on hiring East Montpelier to do the whole part of the asphalt county road. Right. And I wonder if the, it might be worth Getting Certainly. a ballpark idea, at least yeah. of what Do they that, that might be a lot cheaper than hiring somebody else. Sure. Assuming they've got the capacity to do it too. They've got I don't know how much how their road crews are spread. Would they want to take that on? You mean like you mean the idea of having yeah. East Montpelier do that extra pass or something? Yeah. I think that's something we could check on. It might be cheaper. Yeah. Right there. Right. That's what I'm thinking. It's three miles. So are you asking the East Montpelier to pick up three miles? Three miles. Can we can the folks? Can we not have people talking in the background when other people are talking? I, you can't hear when people are having sidebars, so I'm sorry. Uh, what did you say? What did you mean, say, Stu? I didn't hear I what you said. I can't imagine that they're willing to take on three, three, three more miles. miles. Well, it doesn't hurt to ask. All I can no, say is no. Yeah, no, but it doesn't. We know the road form. We know the road form in there. We so taught them everything. That's, that's right. right. Yeah. 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 The whole system. If they had to do yeah. three miles. Somebody else's three miles is not getting done. Yeah, so, right. well, that could, well, that could be, but I don't think it hurts to ask. No, I'm not. I'm just. Yeah. You know, if it was I mean, the alternative miles, is to find someone plow. else with a plow truck and a salting unit to just pay them to be the county road, for, you know. Warrior? Lone, Lone Ranger. With 1920 again. I like that. Right. So, um, but then there's liability and contracts and all those other issues. Right. When Alfie's out with a one ton and a. Salting. Is he doing any dirt roads? Does he switch back and forth? 
Yes. Uh, yeah, he does. He does some dirt on the way, and he's not salting them. So then, right. eventually, he when he gets back on the other side of town, he, sand, he comes back and sands. So again, it's a tough mix because of where. Right, right. You know, uh, is there any pavement spot? over there, pavement over here, pavement over right. there? Well, so, do we, all in so, a little circle. So, Toby, do we need to relook at the roots and make some adjustments? I mean, is that is well? The adjustments are made based on the bus route every year when we get the bus route schedules. So. Right. Yeah, I heard that, but I'm talking about after the bus route schedules. Is there? You, you know, there's some one more thing you should look at with East Park Hill. Stu's right. For them to pick up that mileage is unlikely, but the, what they might do is swap. If we had, if we were able to do an East Montpelier mileage that was closer to our town garage, farther from theirs, they might do something like that, where we pick up a couple miles of one of their roads, where, where it's a closer oh, yeah, run. And there's one well, they're and already there's, picking up for us. Um, yeah, there's already some there. Well, that's a, that too, right? if we can get closer to that easy. But if we get closer to that East Montpelier, or get there, some roads in East Montpelier that are closer to our garage, it might save them. I don't know. That's just a question you could ask. No, our garage is closer to our Wick and Woodbury. Yeah. It's not really, it doesn't. Well, we can have those conversations. So, Stu, can I suggest something then for Vermont local roads? That when you have these road foreman's meetings, when it's not crunch season and everybody's all tired out, is there a way to? have a topic like this discussed at some of your road foreman meetings? I've been to some of them. Right. And um, it might be... Certainly could be discussed. In fact, I had to go West Windsor Wednesday, I guess. Yeah. Um, to have a, a similar discussion. Hmm. Um, you mean with their and, select board and residents? No, it's just amongst the foreman, the oh. foreman's meetings. But your foreman's meetings are run by the um, pretty regional much planning. regional planning people. So and you guys have one scheduled, I think, for... Yeah. I saw the notice. April 4th or something like that. But I'm thinking, you know, maybe uh, in June when everybody's not sick of snow and they're in a better uh, mood, they're all grumpy in, right now. In June, uh, uh, in June uh, they'll uh, still be sick of snow. They'll be grumpy about <laughs> mosquitoes and ditching, but well, uh, mowing and whatnot. So I can ask CBRPC, right? Yeah. Ashley could, you know, she's a contact. Is it Ashley? It's Ashley? Ashley's a white contact. Oh, damn. Yeah, this one's scheduled in April. Yeah. yeah, but I'm thinking, but, let's not do it, talk about it in April after everybody's kind of, sick of it. It's not, I mean, there's a lot of towns that do exactly what we're talking about. Maybe not two miles, but usually it's dictated by where the safe turnaround is. Yeah, I mean, you know, and that plays into the whole thing, too. It's somebody's having to turn around out the lily wraps and they're mm -hmm. stuck. They can be there for two months and. Nobody would know it. Yeah, so especially <laughs> if you don't run radios. Um, so, but, you know, that kind of thing is. You know, I'm just making a note to ask Ashley. She maybe she can put it on an agenda. Yeah. I know. I and sometimes, that, sometimes yeah, road but, road people are very territorial. Oh yeah, but, but we have. I to, think a lot of these meetings are breaking that down. Yeah. Is, and there's a, the other thing is a generational switch going on from, you know, classic right here next door. You small tell you where you went from. White from White to Guthrie. I mean, it's. Yeah, it's quite the change. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's a generational thing, which, you know, mm -hmm. so it's... Um, and we got to think outside the box if we're going to have all oh, these changing weather conditions it's, and stuff. So that's why we're that's why we're having these meetings. Yeah. We're trying to get input. We're trying to get ideas. You know, no idea is a bad idea until you try it, right? I, my first reaction is you just, you've got a problem with a five and six hour truck road. Mm -hmm. It just seems to be too much. You know, they, they're, they're yeah. it's sorting them out. Sorting Can I ask why it takes five? Well, according to the I'm plan, sorry, it, takes, you let, you let, it takes six to ten hours, according to the plan, to do a roof. Yeah, well, that's not correct, apparently. It's five, it's to, five six to six. So still, if we have 80 miles of road to plow, and there's four routes, I'm assuming they're all approximately the same distance. That's I 20 miles of route. Why does it take five hours We're to plow out. five? Well, it's, it's, no, it's, it's 40 hours. Or does he do it both ways? 40, 40 miles. miles. Could you go one way and then the other way? Well, still, that seems excessive amount of time to do well, we've 40 got a, miles. We've got a town garage in an extreme end of town, so you got to, you know, you're not plowing. Yeah, you're, running, you're running empty. You're not 
they're not flying. Yeah. And they're also not going. So. They're not going very fast. They're not going 35 miles an hour. Well, I understand. You know, they're probably yeah. going 10, maybe 10 miles an hour. And every the intersection they do is a stop and push and back and around and push yeah. back the corner and yeah, it's. Maybe you'd like to. You and then they got a wing. Go out with one of they the got drivers. a wing stuff too when it gets. And deep. see, I did that. Because I wanted to see. It's three in the morning. A blizzard. So given that you, you see that there's a problem with these long routes, well, so, so do you I have any suggestions? Pardon? I don't know if I want to call it a problem. It's a, trouble, a, a place to start looking. Okay. And how you go about that mm -hmm. is, is whether you need to put a full-time person in that your spare truck. Right. Um, I don't know the routes, how much overlap you know, that they're getting. Um, you know, running from one end of town or, you know, some roads mm -hmm. might be getting plowed three times just to get the guy to know where he's headed. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it's, mm -hmm. there, there may be options in the, in the route mm -hmm. that would help all around, but I, I, I can't say that because right. I don't know the lay of the well, land. I think and, that's and these guys have been doing it long enough that it would seem they've worked out those efficiencies mm -hmm. pretty well. Yeah, I'm sure they've probably done the best they can, so I'm just wondering if we could stockpile in a couple of different places in town or in another town, that might help eliminate some of the time that it takes instead well, of So stockpiling in town is really not an option unless you buy another loader. Right. Or you rent a loader for the winter. So there's a cost, there's a huge cost in, in that. As well as trying to locate where you can put the sand pile. The, the other thing too is remembering it once the situation is turned to ice or it is a rain, situation, you know, they're not plowing, they're just putting down sand, and if you're putting down sand that's going to amount to anything, they must have to come back in between, there's no way they're doing a four hour route trip with one more sand, or if you are running, you're coming up short on sand. But yeah, so they, you know, essentially they'll come back and refill and, you know. That takes and that, time. Yeah, and, uh, and all that time, you know, and, and if it's raining hard, mm -hmm. they're going to come and leave the sand, just sand the road they just came back on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think one of the biggest things is to check out some other locations to put material. Yeah. But, you know, if there are problem spots mm -hmm. where the sand is staying, I, I, I'm going to assume that the, they are sanding the road, it's just not staying. Mm -hmm. On the know, back roads? Yeah. After, I, I, I got a bit that assumption that the sand is, either, is not staying. They're not, not the sanding, are they, Tony? No, they're sanding. I, I mean, I have to so, believe them. Yeah. I, so I've, I've been seeing more sand lately. Like I went to work last, Sunday morning and weeks. it had snowed <laughs> and the road was sanded and I noticed it and I was like, wow, sand on the road. Great, oh. yes, thank you. You know, lots of times, and this is a question for you, Toby. Lots of times I notice sand on, on the back roads and there's a line in the middle of the road. It's not like a very wide line. It, it, it looks like a malfunction in the thing. Yeah, I noticed that too. And, and I'm I like, think what? they just do the middle of the road sometimes. Well, like, so they just cut through the single plow. So the what? way the trucks are laid out, sand drops out of the bottom of the bed, the bed of the truck, and there's a wheel that yeah. spins it. Yeah. So depending on the consistency of the sand, whether it's cold and hard, is how far that goes. We have our spreads. Is there a way to adjust that? Um, <clears throat> not a lot. I mean, it was nicely faster. spread Sunday morning. It was like a proper, what I call proper sand. But, but so again, so warmer temperatures, the sand's probably going to be looser and finer and will spread more. And they do have an adjustment of how much sand comes out of the truck. Mm -hmm. yeah. So essentially when they go down, they're putting the sand in the center of the road and throwing it to the side. And when they turn around and come back the other way, they're doing the same thing. So there will be excessive sand in the middle of the road. So essentially, oh, the middle of the road, and that's when <clears throat> you get one tire of traction for sure in the middle. It's not going to be across the whole road, unless you have a, a rear a rear dump where it spreads the whole rear across the truck. You're not going to get consistent sand across the road. You can so I'm, I'm filled with all those adjustments, depending. But I mean, the other thing is the adjustments. Change. So if you're on a 12 foot wide road or you're on a 24 foot wide road, you've got the same setup. So well, you kind of got to find middle ground. Most of the back roads are approximately 
mean, well, it depends. I mean, I don't know what your backgrounds are. Right? Once and typically, deeper. we're trying to keep you trying to keep the salt or the sand as salt too, but I'm not in the center of the road and let it drift with traffic and, and gravity. So that you know you're not spreading it from shoulder to shoulder when you go down through there on the typical. Sometimes do that. But I, I do encourage folks to, to I'm, I'm serious, I'm dead serious, to go to the town garage. The town crew loves to show you the trucks and, and see how things are set up and ask questions and go for a ride in one of the trucks or something. They, I'm serious, some go, of go and see. And, and Al has encouraged calling and stuff, but yeah. some of my concerns are not the kind of thing I'm going to bother Al with like staffing issues, you know, like, right. no, 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 like, I'm not suggesting you know I mean? for that, like, I'm just I'm going to see the, see the equipment, yeah, no, see, how, see, how, idea. see how, and I, I tried to set up a meeting with Al, I wanted to have a meeting in Maple Corner, in fact, but we, what, and he and knows that he really need, it really needs to go through the select board, yeah, so that's I why that didn't, I had hoped to, to, well, he might be coming, he might come to another meeting, but I'm sure, right. you know, that, a night off is probably... No, I'm, I'm not saying that. He probably has a good reason he's not here. But my hope was to talk about not just like not just like get acquainted with the truck or something, but like to understand more step, stepping back one step and, and structural, more structural problems. Are, like are there problems with staffing? Do we need to look at the schedules? Like deeper issues than just like, hey Al, um, my road is doesn't have any sand right, and it's slippery. You know, like I, it, I've heard great things about Al. Like if you call him with a specific issue, mm -hmm. he'll come right out and fix it. He's really responsive to that. But that's not really quite what I'm talking right, about. Right, but the pro but wait, you, just so you know and everybody else, the staffing issues, the, the, the budget and stuff, that doesn't necessarily all get decided by Alfred. That goes through the select board no, and the I operations know. manager. So we're hearing. We're hearing what and you're I'm, saying. And I'm very happy that this meeting's happening. Um, so we're hearing what you say, and we will definitely have further conversations about the issues. But for Al, for you to just go directly to Alfred about staffing and stuff, he knows that's not the right process. Right, and I wouldn't do that. And, you know, um, can I ask just a couple, couple more clarification sure. questions since I have this opportunity? Um, getting back to what Chris was saying, you know, he has a job where he's, traveling past hours mm -hmm. um, and, and and the hours where the people aren't normally out are between nine and three is that correct Roughly. so um, just for clarification like if there's a freezing rain event or rain on top of cold roads and it's nine o'clock this this is sort of useful information to townspeople like when I leave my chorus on Monday night at 9 30 and it's sprinkling rain and it's been really cold, you know, do I, should I have any confidence that the town will have, will change their schedule a little if there's an event that's happening off hours or no? And it's just a question. Yeah, it's a totally question. Right now. Probably, and again, so did it start raining at nine and by the time they call the guys in and try to deal with it? It's going to be 10, 10.30 by the time they get to the road that you might want to travel in. It might be 11 o'clock at but, night. But they would be out at 11 during a freezing rain event? No, not necessarily. I mean, essentially, they're, they're, um, they're off. They're off, yeah. And that's pretty, um, unless it, like it's super extreme. Um, I've driven home in the middle of a blizzard with a foot of snow on the road, and that's just what I've learned is, is the expectation. There's also it, kind of a, you know, Years ago, I read a study about why uh, state police officers had such a high incidence of suicide. And when you vary people's schedules and they don't get any consistency, if you're on a night shift consistently, that's good. If you're on a day shift, that's good. But they've changed this over the years because of these statistics. When you were two weeks on the day shift and they're trying to be fair, according to the union contract, and they put you on the, the early evening shift and then you're two weeks later on the night shift, disrupting people's sleep schedules has huge health ramifications. Heart, mental health, right. suicide, literally. So um, that's just out, put that out there. Just, just we can't like, be subject these guys' oh, lives I, I, I'm to. I'm certainly so. not suggesting that um, we overtax No, no, people. I know, just so. I'm just, yeah. I'm just, just for clarification, like a guy like Chris, 
who's got a job that puts him on the road at midnight, pretty much he's on his own regardless of conditions. Like freezing rain. That's what I've been hearing. That's, that's, that's like, why it's my That's like thing. tough so luck. It's like too bad. Change your job. Move out of Palace. I mean, just asking that sort of the general. Well, well so when you say move out of Callus, try to find a town that actually does that. Because oh. I, I mean, I gave the select board probably ten towns that have the exact same water quality <coughs> as we do. It says at nine o'clock the guys are not going out and they're not going back in until three. So it is a Vermont standard of of practice. But like I mentioned in the last meeting, I I, look, I work in Burlington, so I have a hundred mile commute back and forth. And the only part I dread is like Lightning Ridge Road. Mm -hmm. So so why do you take Lightning Ridge Road? Do you Just because it's convenient. Yeah. It's the closest road. What, where, I live on the Adamant Road. Right. So I I, I, I live off Adamant Road. I live on Singleton Road. Mm -hmm. I never take Lightning Ridge Road. I always come up county because of the hills. Particularly in the winter, the last thing road I would be on in the winter is Lightning Ridge Road. There's a spot south, east east of Doug Lilly's farm. You're going great, and then you hit that next break and slope. You will not get up, and there's a curve. That's the worst road probably you could pick in town, and it's actually longer. I don't understand why. You, I mean, the best way to go is to go top of Main Street, catch County Road, and quite frankly, in the winter, you take uh, Center Road. Center road. And you go up because that's salted and paved and pretty good usually, but in the middle of the night may not be as good. Oh, but you take that road. But but if the roads are snow covered or icy, you don't take that road. You stay on County Road because it's it's more gradual. And then you you take other roads like Bliss Pond Road. So when the roads are really bad, you go all the way to Bliss Pond Road because then you can avoid the hill coming out of Adam. Mm -hmm. And then. It's, it's, it's flat. Yeah, I don't mind place. driving in the snow. It's the ice that yeah, I concerns right. The worst road is, is I, you know, Ridge. I've lived in Vermont my whole life. Yeah. I've been driving in the snow my whole life. Mm -hmm. I don't have an issue with the snow. It's the ice. Yeah. It's just, and because of climate change, we seem to be getting in, in this particular winter, if you look at a history of the temperature shifts, it's not a long, steady, slowly warming it's cold, hot, cold, hot, hot, cold, hot, cold, hot, mm -hmm. cold. And those narrow cycles of freezing and thawing, freezing and thawing, <clears throat> are something that there's just nothing that we literally can do about. Because by the time we would put a piece of equipment out there to deal with the ice, it's melting. And that equipment is going to get stuck and tear up the road. You know, if I took a grader out there and tried to break up the ice or whatever, I mean, what you have to understand is gravel roads in Vermont are like driving on an on a ice, up on a lake of ice. It's really, it's packed snow that goes through freeze and thaw cycles. And we do the best to make you travel slowly and safely over it, but, <clears throat> you know, we're not wizards. We're, you know, we, can't, we can't do it all. But I don't think people are asking for it all. That's, that's the point. I mean, <coughs> again, I get back to this thing where you know, it's sort of an either, all or nothing attitude. And, and, I, and I don't, I think that's unfair. Like, I don't ask for it all. I'm happy to drive through a foot of snow during a storm. And I, I, I have studied good snow tires. That's not the point. You know, like, we're all Vermonters. We ex our expectations aren't that the roads are always perfect. I mean, we, we understand that. We live in Vermont. We've been here for decades. But it's, it's situations where... It's extreme, and you know, you know, the road is a sheet of ice, and the, it's been a sheet of ice for days. The storm was three days ago, and you're you're looking down, and, and this is this has happened many many times. And Stuart, you, anybody could back me up here. I know it's not just me. And I go, where is the sand? Like, come on, you know. So, so and if I can, I'm just I'm, I'm learning from all you, and I'm also I also learned my. I had a class, inadvertent class, at, at that incident where the school bus met the log truck. Um, I mean, some things I took away from that was, one, the log truck was going uphill on an ice-encrusted, horrible road, um, and he went up no problem, uphill, and had plenty of traction because he had the right tires. Um, uh, you have the right tires. But um, the school bus had the absolute wrong tires. He had weight too. But what I also learned, what I also learned, Alfred had just come through there with sand, and I got out of my car, and I almost, 
and there was the thinnest layer of snow, and that wasn't what was ca causing the slick conditions. Um, it was that that ice was so, so rock hard because it had rain and melted, and then and this has happened all through the winter, and it became this, it was like rock hard, it was like granite, man, like polished granite. And I said, how can this be? I just saw it since, like, literally did like a science project and I rubbed my boot. I could not rub and dig that sand into that ice. It just, it and there was off. sand there. It just Where's wouldn't it? dig in. I, I couldn't, I wouldn't have believed it if I hadn't done that. So that might be, you know, Scott talked about hot loading and Stu putting some salt. Maybe that's a, something we could do. Yeah, I think it's something we've not, we can, we've not make a I don't think we've ever it's done that. Routine. Routine. You do it just it's a, well, and especially if it's a road like Lightning Ridge where you know that it's routinely... And it gets a lot of traffic, so it ices not a good road. from that. It's right. a really Because the, it, road. And the more you drive on a road, does it make it yeah, more icy? icy. Yeah. So that, students, so you know that road is, it's, it's got a lot of bends. It's steep and really steep in sections. Blind corners. It's just, it's like the worst road in town. And it gets... Huge traffic, traffic. It's traffic. the elementary school is at the far end of it. So every, all town on this side of town funnels into that. It's just... Mm -hmm. awesome. well, I mean, I, I lived in the middle of Lightning Road, yeah. Lightning Ridge, for 10 years. So I, I drive two-wheel drive. And I ran studs, and I almost never had trouble. It got bad, but you just had, you had to drive carefully. It's bad. I, I, I drove it every day. I drive tractor up there. Rick, I used to yeah. pick up compost at the school. And I'll tell you, I was sideways, and I was. Well, tractors scared. aren't great on. It's well, this easy. thing had no problem anywhere but that road. Well, I mean, I it was always it. icy. I, I mean, I get it. It's a bad road. Because of the way the road is. The it's Lily Hill road. there was a bad one, and there was the big hummock. Yeah. But I mean, I've seen worse roads in Lightning Ridge. I mean, wouldn't, you know, I've driven a lot worse roads actually, and I mean, I drove that every day, twice a day, and very early in the morning and very late at night, after long after the plows. And so this hot day. hot load. Stuff does that need a separate piece of equipment on no, the truck? Sand belt. It's sand just salt. Do it's just sand salt. Yeah. It makes you with 200 pounds of salt into a load of sand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so it's, and roll it up so it's just mixed. It'll mixed. burn in a little better. And then the yeah. sand will grip better, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's really something that yeah. seems like it's going to be a fairly reasonable fix. Yeah, but you don't want to do it every time just because I mean, it's a situation right. where that's the way to right. break up your eyes and get some gravels. That so that's an idea. And can we just review? I guess, it seems like maybe we're winding down here. Right. Well, I've been, I've been making a list of like ideas. Yeah. Do you want me to, yeah, want me to read right. them? Yeah. What I have so far stockpile, stockpile material in other parts of town. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Oh, thanks for coming. Thank you. Review the plow routes. Um, investigate whether or not we have enough manpower to do a staggered, maybe a staggered person. And this hot load. Um, on back roads. Right. Where on the ices. Right. Where it ices. What about, what about a, a way that, like, could be some sort of online thing or something where people could post, like, if there's a trouble spot that they want the road, without necessarily calling him and mm -hmm. calling him off of a route or something. There's a, there's like so a way to, a way to communicate. But, from, yeah, like, I like agree. A blog on the I town agree that the Front Porch it. Forum is, is not a useful way. But that is a bulletin board. That well, that the trouble is, is that posts like once a day. Yeah. So if there's a trouble spot, you want it to but get there. But we had a blog exactly. on the town website. Yeah, I mean, it's Alfred a place where people could and put concerns, and, and that might be a good way to share information. Yeah, right. good, well, yeah. don't forget when he's out plowing. Hopefully, he's not. Right, he's but when not, he, <laughs> he, he's got his yeah. eyes on the road. Just in terms of efficiency, these seem to be trouble spots that we need to hit first. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. A way to there, communicate. there was, you know, and I know we don't get good cell phone coverage now, but there is an app called Ushahidi. Who? It was Ushahidi. It was actually developed in Africa for a disaster. They used it over in Can Japan. Can you send me the? I you have to find the link. We used it in Addison County actually during Irene. You know, and it's and it's basically set up so that anyone with a cell phone or a phone can call it. They can post to a site. You can either filter them, or you can have a direct post. So you can basically cloud source people to live update conditions. Right. So our technology guru on the select board, Cliff, 
Yeah. It's going to check into Who should this. Be? I can find out. Boston yeah. did this with potholes as a way to really? identify where the worst pothole yeah. was right. years ago. So well, this I, is not a brand yeah. new I mean, I really appreciate this discussion. I think it's very nice. People aren't yelling and getting really nasty about stuff because that doesn't get anybody anywhere. So I think this has been yeah. really good. I appreciate everybody's input. And Did you have any other action? That's what I had okay. for now without reviewing my notes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I think we also talked about seeing, asking if oh. East Montpelier right. wants to cover some of the county road if we pay them some. Just right, East Montpelier. Or, or trading or miles. Or trading miles. Doesn't hurt to ask. And also just maybe if we want to have just somebody covering the county road all day, you know. Um, Subcontractor. It's expensive. Uh, right. What what is suggested in a lot of situations, and I'm once again I'm not sure if it work here, based on what I know now, but some places will dedicate a truck to the pavement. Uh huh. Okay. So that that's all they do. They do pavement. So some yeah, looking into that. But if you're given that it's a main thoroughfare, it's scattered, scattered yeah. and you're spending scattered. way too much time right. traveling, not doing anything else, you know, so yeah. it may or not be an yeah, appropriate I'm option. Here. Kind of so side. sub subcontractor to well, do the county road. Okay. Mm -hmm. Got it. Public or private. Yeah. Rick's suggestion about using them. Proactively using liquid brine, catalyzed liquid brine. We should is definitely that look at liquid that. brine. No, but the state stopped using that for yeah, some reason. Yeah, that's because they were using brine. They were using a liquid well, brine without the catalyst. They <laughs> did the cheap version. Remember there's, that. Was, there's several ways to look at it in this thing. For five miles of road, I think you're going to be hard pressed to justify buying equipment to apply brine. Mm -hmm. um, <coughs> and you're using the magic salt. Magic, you're yeah, we're using the magic salt. Really, oh, really I know the other thing was to see how much magic salt we're putting down as opposed to East Montpelier, right? The brine, t the brine companies would s spit the trucks up for a dollar with a tank. If you know, if you had to buy a certain amount, now we're only doing five miles, but you could also use it for dust control in the summer. So you could always make your. Well, we amount. have the chloride. That's what I mean. The you have use these, right. but I mean for the booms because you actually put a boom on the back of the truck, but, and they put a tank, and they would fit those up for a buck, your truck. To, to that's why it's just worth your looking at. Get us that deal. It's well, worth yeah. looking yeah. well, at. So part of the problem, part of the problem is it's now you're committing a truck to that truck. tank. You're right about and that. And there's nothing else that truck can do except well, with that. That's and right. We don't have it, all those trucks. I yeah. get it. I get so it. So that's too. not that's not a viable. That goes back to the committing a truck yeah. to, to yeah. salt. You can mm -hmm. put a, a saddle, saddle tank on it and mm -hmm. treat your salt. Yeah. Question is, can you use it in a limited way? And I don't know with those catalyzed on a, on your really bad icy stone sections to break up. And I, I don't uh, know the answer because you might turn into mud. That'd be messy. I would, yeah, I, I would be, recommend that. Because yeah. what will happen is it'll melt the ice and then it'll melt the road. So yeah, it does. Mud, it does. It does. Mud does. Mud You're right. That's, that's, right. that's why you have to be careful using these hot loads. Mm -hmm. So I mean, don't yeah. think that every load should be a hot load. Right. Gotcha. Otherwise, you're going to turn your road to puke. <laughs> That's such a lot of What you're going to be having here soon enough, anyway. Well, <laughs> yeah, there's one last If you look at the brine, what could another possibility is you know working a deal with like an MOU with East Montpelier because they right. Might well, be, that's what we're looking. Well, what I meant is to you know there might be a truck that was dedicated because then you do all your pavement, and that. But their system's working for them. Maybe, think, but it might. Think, be. Well, we don't know. Might save. We'll find out. I think everybody in every town has road issues. No, I mean the county road seems to be. We're yeah. hearing that they're able to keep up. Well, so. I think that's something that um, our road foreman and Toby and maybe Guthrie and Guthrie and Alfred can all strategize. Strategize and talk about. Maybe it's an opportunity for both towns. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Right. So yeah. Mac wanted to say something. I was just saying we're talking about East Montpelier. They have a. You know, their town garage is pretty close to the county, road. right? Mm -hmm. Maybe we could stockpile Sam there. They have a loader there. Maybe they'd be willing right. to, something to explore. Right. We, well, we talked about Worcester for that same reason because right. they have a loader and they have sand and all that stuff there. So that's another option. Um, John and I were just chatting, even though we're not supposed to. 
because I told everybody else not to about maybe another location on the county road that we're going to think about. Great. So Great. I, I like that you guys are you know really willing to brainstorm. And I yeah. Appreciate that. And yeah. maybe because you guys are going to be talking about it in select board meeting, just keep us updated on the forum or. Right. Well, I'll be posting when we're going to have that forum. Two more. Yeah. It's nasty. It does. I, I but it stay doesn't away always. No, it doesn't always. And most times it's not. Right. But when it does, it's. I, and it you makes me it, sick. I don't want to open it because I'm afraid of what I'm going to well, find. Well, that's the same in town meeting, right? People get up and speak. You can't control it. It's free speech. Yeah, but it's I'd rather people treat people. People, I would too, people but treat people differently when they're agree, in their presence. But, right. But you can't. I don't. I don't like Facebook for that reason. I call it hate. Well, I, I hear you. <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to schedule two more meetings. <laughs> one in Adamant and one in um, East oh. Callis. And then I think what we'll then do is take all that information that we get, investigate some of these options, and try to come up with some things that we can try. I mean, this season now is almost over. Thank God. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Except for mud season. Do you know when the next meeting is? Um, I'm Around. thinking it's going to be like April. Um, I don't know if I want to do one on April Fool's Day or not, but maybe. April 1st, 15th, or 29th, because those are off Mondays from select board meetings. Mm -hmm. So, but you'll, you'll oh, I'll post it, yeah, 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 just like I did this one. And then Stu or his sidekick agreed to come to the meetings too, because I think it's helpful. Yeah, yeah definitely. Mm -hmm. So thank you very much for taking time out of your night. Yeah. Yes, thank you so much. Yes, yeah, Stu, appreciate it. No problem. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank thanks, you. For having, yeah, thanks for having this meeting. Well, lots of brain power here. The other thing I was going to suggest is that there's the civil engineering program at the UVM, and the seniors up there have to do projects. Uh, they, they can plot? Huh? They can plot? <laughs> no, but uh, they might be able to, you know, look at routes. If you're looking at different sand piles, how you vary the routes and how that might, they, they can model that mathematically, and they might be able to help you, you know, Look at the different options that we've been discussing and see if there are some advantages or not. Who might we contact? Then? I'll have to look into that. You want to get back to me? Yeah. Norwich does some of that too. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Academy. They're engineering department. Yeah. The civil engineers that might. Yeah. They yeah. have senior projects. They do. Yeah. Yeah, Thank I've you, got, Chris. I've got four engineers that are driving the trucks and they know where the sand ends up and where it isn't, yeah. where they need to reload. And, they're trying to be as efficient as possible in what they do. Yeah, but we're looking at different options here. And, and you know, have them, you know, have them, you know, they can model what you're doing now, model what, you know, different options and see if there could be any improvements or not. Sure. It'd be a lot of extra work and it wouldn't be very fast because you'd have to see you that. And we may, you know, we may go through all this and come up with a couple of things that would be helpful, but the reality in the end might be, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So I just want to be honest about it. You know, we're, we're looking, we're open to options and ideas. So take it from there. Do you have a card, Stu? Uh, I'm not with me. I probably have some in the truck. Yeah. Okay. All right. Is there anything else anybody would like to say? No. Thanks, thanks for doing this. Welcome. What's your Um, Callis S B Denise at gmail.com. City I heard that. That's what we've been doing so long. I looked at even. Every day is different. One day they're all great, the next day the weather is different. Well, we fixed the drainage issue. Yeah, yeah. water is our end. Yeah. H2O is my is my nemesis. All right, select board. If there were no water. I missed one person's name. I think. Jim Jim Martin. Martin. Okay. Yeah, that's Carol's husband. Do you think it's E W A R T? Well, I don't know. Okay. Oh, so, select board, we need to have a motion to adjourn. I'd move that. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Um, okay.